Your doctor has recommended that you undergo a dilation and curatage, or DNC. But what does that actually mean? The uterus is part of a woman's reproductive system. It's the organ that contains the growing fetus. The cervix forms the neck of the uterus, and the vagina is the canal through which conception and birth take place. The endometrium is a soft lining that protects the fetus during pregnancy. Reasons for having a DNC vary. Most DNCs are performed because the patient has complained of unusually heavy menstrual bleeding. Other common problems include uterine infection, bleeding after sexual intercourse, incomplete miscarriage, or the presence of polyps, small pieces of extra tissue growing on the inside of the uterine wall. Because a DNC can be used either as a diagnostic procedure or as a treatment, or both, it's important that you understand the exact reason why your doctor has made this recommendation. If the DNC is meant to treat abnormal bleeding, you should make sure to discuss alternative treatments with your doctor. In some cases, hormonal drug therapy, destruction of the uterine lining, and even the removal of the uterus are used to treat bleeding problems. However, these are considered to be more extreme treatments and are usually recommended only after a DNC has been tried. If the purpose of the DNC is mainly to remove tissue for analysis in the laboratory, there are no real alternatives to the procedure. Choosing not to have a DNC will not usually put your health at risk. However, symptoms in the uterus can be warning signs of more serious medical problems. And for that reason, you should carefully consider the diagnostic value of your doctor's recommendation to have a DNC. On the day of your operation, you'll be asked to put on a surgical gown. You may receive a sedative by mouth, and an intravenous line may be put in. You will then be transferred to the operating table. To perform a DNC, your doctor needs unobstructed access to your uterus. So your feet will be raised, separated, and placed in canvas slings, holding your legs in a position much like that position used during a routine gynecological exam. To begin, the genital area is swabbed with an antiseptic solution and sterile towels are draped around until only the vulva is exposed. Then the surgeon will use a gloved hand to conduct a vaginal examination and will check the size and location of the uterus by pressing on your lower abdomen. A metal or plastic vaginal speculum is used to gently expand the vagina and allow access to the cervix. Once the cervix is visible, a forcep is used to grasp the front lip of the cervix, causing the uterus to open a little. Using a blunt tipped probe, the surgeon carefully measures the length of the uterus and takes a small sample of tissue from the cervical canal. Next, the surgeon will dilate or open the cervix using a series of progressively larger metal rods called dilators. When the cervix has expanded sufficiently, the doctor will use a spoon-shaped instrument called a curette to gently scrape out the lining of the uterus. In some cases, surgeons use a vacuum curette that sucks tissue out through a narrow tube. When the entire lining of the uterus has been removed, the instruments are withdrawn. The tissue removed will then be sent to a laboratory for analysis. DNC surgery only rarely leads to complications. Possible problems include infection, excessive bleeding, and accidental injury to the uterus. In a very few patients, the cervix can remain partly dilated or slackened, a condition that can lead to spontaneous miscarriage during pregnancy. 
Because no incision has been made, patients recover from a DNC very quickly. Germs are present always on your hands, and they can be transferred to other parts of your own body, to the family member for whom you're caring, your patient, and to any clean object you touch. By washing your hands correctly, you remove germs from your hands. Hand washing is the single most important way you can prevent infection from occurring and prevent the spread of infection. You must carefully wash and dry your hands before and after each time you care for your family member, your patient. Before and after you handle your patients and your own food and drink. Before and after you manipulate any contact lenses. Before you apply and after you remove gloves. After you use the toilet. After you cough, sneeze or blow your nose. After contact with anything that could be soiled or have germs on it. After you pick up any object from the floor. Hand washing takes a minimum of 10 to 15 seconds, longer if your hands are soiled. The longer you wash, the more germs are removed. The friction generated by rubbing your hands together removes the germs from your skin and running water can then wash them away. Every time you wash your hands, take your time and don't rush. Do the hand washing carefully and thoroughly. Use liquid soap from a dispenser. Bar soap holds germs on its surface. Make sure you have paper towels and a waste receptacle nearby. Remove all jewelry from your hand except a wedding band and push your watch and sleeves up away from your hands. Turn on warm water. Point your fingers down to prevent water running onto your arms and wet your hands. Apply soap from the dispenser. Point your fingers down and rub your hands vigorously together in a circular motion. Start counting seconds at this point. Intertwine your fingers to clean all surfaces of the fingers. Rub your fingernails against the palm of the other hand to get soap under the tips of the nails. If your nails are soiled, clean under them with an orange stick or brush. Keep your hands down and continue to rub them together in a circular motion until the end of your count for 15 seconds. Keep your hands down and rinse them from the wrist to fingertips. Pick up a clean paper towel and turn off the water, still keeping your hands pointed down. Discard the paper towel into the waste receptacle. Pick up another clean paper towel and carefully and completely dry your hands. Discard the paper towel into a waste receptacle. The key points to remember are that friction is critical for removing germs and the friction should be applied for at least 15 seconds. Always keep your fingers pointed down and turn off the water with a paper towel.